How are you doing class? Dr. Petty here and today we're going to be covering the uh, fifth project um, or at least topic five's project of Excel. Um, I believe it is the uh, module six and um, in this lesson we're going to be learning how to do several different types of formulas referencing uh, formulas between different sheets and then also looking up different types of lookups and using some of the more advanced features of Excel with regard to data presentation and data organization. So um, let's just go ahead and get right into this. And uh, first thing we wanna do for all of these assignments, of course, is to, uh, we're gonna save as, I'm gonna go ahead and just change this one to a two here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click save and we're good to go. We're ready to begin. Okay, so project steps. Step one, I'm reading from the instructions if you'd like to follow along. Uh, Bao Vong is the sales manager for Murray Medical, a medical device manufacturer with headquarters in Morristown, New Jersey. Bao is analyzing the performance of account representatives and the sales of a company's medical devices. She asks for your help in using Excel tables to complete the analysis. Go to the account representatives worksheet which lists details about Murray Medical account representatives and their clients, sales, and evaluations. Format the completed account representatives data, range A10 through I29, as a table with the headers using dark green table style medium three so that Bao can summarize and filter the data. Use account reps as the name of the table. So essentially what we want to do here is we want to convert this range into a table. And um, even though we're in Excel and everything kind of looks like a table, a table contains data that's kind of related to itself. And it helps us to organize data within that table if we call it a table. And we can actually reference a whole table too. So we can actually treat it as an object within Excel, which makes it kind of easier if you have multiple tables that you need to reference each other. Okay, so first thing we need to do is convert this to a table, but first we need to make sure we're in the right range. And this says A10 through I29. So I'm gonna say A10, there's I29. I'm gonna go ahead and just select this range. And now what I need to do is convert this to a table. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here to the format as a table button that's here. And we're gonna look for the one that they refer us to, which is yeah, format the completed account representative data as a table with headers um, using the medium three. So we're gonna look for the medium three uh, style here, dark green table style medium three. And we'll go ahead and apply this. And uh, we wanna make sure that this box is checked because this says my table has headers. Headers are these little identifiers that are up here. Um, you know, like client ID, client name, account rep. So you wanna make sure that this box stays checked and go ahead and click okay. Now, um, you're gonna get this little message that says, hey, do you wanna discover more about your data? Just go ahead and click not now. We don't need that right now. That is a, a tool that's built into Excel that helps you analyze data and gives you some options based on what you selected, the best way that you can organize and present it, but we're just not doing that right now. So you'll see as once I've labeled this as a table, I get these little boxes with these little drop down arrows. And these are actually like little filters that I could, you know, deselect and select various things and make information appear or disappear from this table. But for now, it looks like we've done this step right. So the only thing we want to do is uh, one thing I forgot to do. I'm going to go ahead and select this range again. Notice up here, this says table two. Uh, we need to make sure that this says account reps because we want to name the table and later on we're going to be referencing this table based on the name. So we need to make sure that we have that information in there and that it's correct. So I'm just, I think I misspelled that. So account reps. Okay. And I didn't save it. So if it doesn't do that, uh, save for you. You just have to just hit enter afterwards. I'm gonna do this again. Do this again. No spaces and I'm gonna hit enter. This time it should have saved account reps. So once you select that table and you convert it to a table, you wanna make sure that you change the name here under table names or it's not going to turn out good for your assignment. So 
Going on uh, to step number two, sort the account reps table first in ascending or ascending order by the name of the account rep and then in descending order by total sales. So Bao can quickly identify the top sellers for each rep. So let's do that. Let's uh, select this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to the home tab. I'm going to go to sort and filter, but I'm actually going to ask for a custom sort. Um, this tool, if you missed that, it's just a home tab right here, sort and filter. Uh, custom sort. Now here you see there's these different levels. Well the very first thing we want to do here is plug in the one we want to sort. So sort the account reps table first. Okay so we're gonna select account rep. Um, oh by name of account. Yeah by the name of the account rep. So we want to find the uh, account rep name. So that's this one here. So yeah is it client name. Account rep name. Okay. And then we want to sort this based on, you know, we want to sort this in ascending order. So ascending is A to Z, of course, g gradually increasing. Um, I'm going to add another level, and at this time we're going to add um, top seller. So it says here, table first in ascending order by the name of the account rep, and then in descending order by the total sales. So here is total sales, which is right here. It's one of these um, you know, fields. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and we're gonna say descending order. So we're gonna go largest to smallest and I'm gonna click okay. Now it went ahead and sorted this and as you can see, it did a two level sort. So it sorts within the area and then again within the total sales. Um, but that's all you have to do for that step. Let's go ahead and move on to step three. So step three says each account rep is assigned to a tier, which determines whether they receive a salary bonus. Bao wants to list the tier for each account rep according to the bonus tiers data in the range K5 through L9. Okay, so we're gonna be working in K5 through L9, which is right over here. So we're gonna be referencing something on this range. And it says in cell H11, so let's go to cell H11. So there we are. Enter a formula using the VLOOKUP function. Use a structured reference to the eval score G11 as the lookup value. Use an absolute cell reference to the bonus tier data range K through 6, L through 9 as the table array. Use the tier column, column 2 as the column index number and do not enter a value for the optional range lookup argument. If Excel does not copy the formula automatically, fill it in using the fill handle through the range it's supposed to. Okay, so here it gives us this little hint in the instructions to avoid a hashtag spill error. Enable implicit intersection by placing this row specifier, um, which is the ampersand or the at symbol in front of the field names. Okay, let's go ahead and set this up. So we're in sale, we're in H11 here. First thing we wanna do is uh, we wanna come over here to auto sum and I'm gonna look for more functions. Now, in this little window that we get here, we get the option to, we can just like type this up directly. I mean, I don't have to look through all of these. I know I'm looking for VLOOKUP. And I'm gonna go ahead and just click go. And voila, there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and just double click that. And now we're gonna start, we're gonna be able to set up our equation here. So what is the first lookup value? So um, use a structured reference to the eval score, uh, cell G11. So the cell G11 is going to be our lookup value. So if you look at G11, which is right here, um, we're going to say a structured reference. Now, what a structured reference means is, you know, rather than just calling out an explicit reference, which is, you know, if I were to just type G11, what we want to do is click on this area within this table to set this up, so this is referencing total sales, and as you see, here's our at sign. We really don't have to do much more beyond that. Okay, so the table array, in this case, is gonna be K6 through L9. So at that time, or at this time, what you wanna do is go ahead and just select this range here. Okay, so um, use the absolute uh, cell to reference. So we wanna use an absolute value here, so what we want to do is I want to put dollar signs in this equation on either side of our column headers here. And this is going to declare this as an absolute reference 
Now absolute reference is gonna help us do things that divide by negative integers and zero and things like that that help us return a value, even if that value is negative, it's a very important feature. Okay, so we have that. Now the column index number, it says use the tier column, column two, as the colics index number. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So column is gonna be number two, and I'm gonna click OK. There we go. That's what we wanted right there. So we should have silver, bronze, silver, silver, um, autocorrect options, don't worry about that. Uh, if you got that little button, just ignore it. And I think that's it. We just move on to step number four. Mary Medical or Murray Medical awards a bonus of 5% to account reps who earn platinum tier ratings for their clients. In cell I11, enter a formula using the if function and the structured references that test whether the value in the tier field is equal to platinum. If it is, multiply that value in the total sales field by 0 0.05. Otherwise, enter a zero in the cell. If Excel does not copy the formula, fill it over. Okay, there we go, should be good. Okay, so for this step, what we want to do is we want to set up this equation in here so that we identify who's getting their bonus. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and we're going to go look for an if function. More functions. Um, yeah, so I'm going to come over here. Actually, we need to be an I11. So we're going to, I'm going to go here. I'm sorry. So we're going to go over here. More functions if and i'm gonna click ok all right so let's set up our logical test so what we want to do is um, select the, uh, this range so we want to select the platinum from the tier range right so that's what our instruction said says to do so i'm going to select this and um what i also need to do is says equal to platinum And the value of true here, what I want to do is I want to multiply this or I want to multiply this up based on the total sales. So I'm just going to click uh, the total sales. I mean, if I were to just go ahead and select that, I see I, I get that right there, uh, which is pretty convenient. OK, so and the value of false, of course, we already said was value of true is total sales. I'm sorry, I almost forgot something here. We're going to multiply this by 0.05. And the, volu the value of false is, we're just gonna set this to zero. And um, yeah, so up here, I'm gonna get rid of this because this isn't coming in quite like I like it to. I'm gonna try this, there we go. Uh, instead of highlighting the whole range, go ahead and just select the one cell that we're referencing. So if we're referencing the tier table, just select that cell and you're gonna get that at symbol will generate for you. You won't have to type it in manually. So when I click okay, Looks like we forgot to do one little thing here, so it's okay if we just double click this. Um, we just forgot to set it to if the, the set it to equal to uh, platinum. So here, when I'm gonna come up out here in of this equation, I'm gonna type the equal sign and um, equals platinum. Oops, yeah, I accidentally hit the return key. Equals platinum. There we go, uh, and now it should update. Okay, there we go. So if you look in this cell, when you click in here, this is what your equation should look like. You should only have a few figures here, um, and uh, there you go. So we have our figures, we have our equation built in here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape just so I can get it out of that, but we're ready to move on to the next step. Which is, um, Bao asks you to identify the account reps with high, average, and low evaluation scores. In the evaluation score column, range G11 through G29, G29, create a new icon set, conditional formatting rule using the three stars icon. Edit the rule to display a shaded star in the cells with a number type value greater than or equal to eight. Display a half shaded star in cells with a number type greater than or equal to six. Display any unshaded star or display an unshaded star in cells with a number type value less than six. Okay, so 
First thing we wanna do is you see we have this eval score thing here and what we really wanna do is fill this with stars that give us a visual representation of what's going on. To do this, I'm gonna come over here to conditional formatting. We're gonna look at icon sets and then we're gonna come down to this little rating system down here. But before we select this, I want you to look at more rules. And the reason for that is this, you really need to set this up in the wizard. It's kind of difficult to do just with the graphic user interface, but here if I, uh, I'm gonna set the icon set to the stars and we're gonna go by numbers here. And so what is the value? Uh, the very first value is eight. So anybody over an eight is gonna have a value and then anything over a six, right? So, and if you look at the instructions, it says greater than or equal to on both of these. And if you look at these options, you can see greater than or equal to are our options. When I click okay, you can see that the stars populate in here and we have this uh, little rating system within the eval score box. So that was it for that step. So step number six says add a total row to the account reps table, which automatically totals the rep bonuses. Using the total row, display the count of the client names, the sum of the total sales, and the average of the eval scores. So the very first thing I wanna do is select my table because we're gonna be modifying the table. I'm gonna come over here to table design and I'm going to look for total row. And there it is. So it's just a little checkbox that you turn on. Because this is recognized as a table, we can do a total row and we have our total row here. Now that I have it selected, total row, as you can see, I, I toggle it on and off. As I click into these little boxes down here, I get different options that pop up as I look at these different um, little fields, if you will. Now it says here, display the count of client names. So over here is client names. I'm gonna just literally select count. It's gonna count them, okay. The sum of the total sales. So we're gonna look at the sum of the total sales and the average of the eval scores. So here I'm gonna look at the average. Very good. Okay, so you can kind of see how that is able to display data very quickly um, and is, is quite efficient at being able to look at, you know, something that if we wanted to see real quickly who had, what was the average score here, what was the total sales, so on and so forth. So step number seven, in the range N6 through 08, Val wants to list key findings from the data in the account reps table in cell 06. Enter a formula using the D average function. So let's go to 06. So we're in 06. Enter a formula using the D average function to average the sales of the Destra medical device. Use a range reference to the account reps table. Okay, so in this case, we're not doing that at sign in here. So I'm gonna come over here to auto sum, more functions. I'm gonna type D average. I'm gonna say go, and I'm gonna double click on the result. So we have that right function up. Um, use the range reference to the account reps table. Okay, so we're gonna go A10 here uh, through I29. And the field in this case is going to be uh, total sales. And the criteria is going to be um, Q5 through Q6. And I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And there we go. So we have our formula here. And it looks like everything is present and working. So very good. All right, so uh, step number eight says in cell 07, Enter a formula using the sum if function that totals the sales for Destra medical devices. Uh, use a range reference to the device value range 11, E11 through E29 as the range and Q6 as the criteria and a range reference to the total sales range F11 through F29 as the sum. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is come over here to our equations. We're gonna look for more functions and this time we're gonna do a sum if 
So I'm going to look that up just like so and click go. I'm going to type some if or click some if, not some if s. Don't click some if s. That's going to be different. You will have a different formula set up. Um, so what we're looking for here is the uh, E11 through E29. The criteria that is what we are evaluating this against. We're going to say the criteria is Q6, which is, if you look for Q, which is right here. And the sum range is going to be F11 through F29. Oh, looks like I added an extra six. So let's go ahead and get that out of there. Enter. There we go. So sometimes you mess up on formulas and things don't always work out the way you want to. Um, if you select a formula or a cell that has a formula in it, it's always better to work up here from the formula bar so you can kind of see what's going on. This is the correct formula. I just had an extra six here next to my Q. So if you did type that, make sure you didn't take that out. It should be as it appears right here to have the correct formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, step number nine. What step number nine says in cell 08, enter a formula using the count if function that counts the number of Destro devices using a structured reference to the device column, a count reps device as the range and cell and Q6 as the criteria. Okay. So to do this step, all we need to do is to come over here to auto sum, more functions. Uh, we're going to look for count if, looks like I've used this before. And we're going to first call out account reps, because we want to call out the table. Account reps, uh, like so. And then I'm going to open up a square bracket so we can reference the field. So uh, device. And there we go. Uh, get that uh, extra thing out of there. And then the criteria is just going to be Q6, just like that. Okay, so you'll see Q6 says Destra, and it's looking how many Destra reps are selling devices. That's what we're looking for here. If I click OK, you can see it returns the number four, um, and that's correct. That's what it should look like. Okay, great. Let's move on. Step number 10. Bao wants to identify clients in the Southeast with a total sales of $100,000 or more, and then list them in a separate part of the worksheet. In cell D6, enter a criterion to select clients in the SE area. So let's go to D6, and in here we're just going to type in SE, because this is a criterion, what we're looking for. And then what we're going to do in cell F6, enter a criterion to select total sales greater than or equal to 100000 so here I'm going to type greater than equal to 100000, 100,000. Now create an advanced filter using the data in the count reps table range A10 through I29 is the list range. All right, so what we want to do from this point, we've got this set up. We want to go ahead and create uh, an advanced sort. So in order to do that, we need to go to data and we're going to select advanced and the list range is going to be defined in the instructions so it says here create advanced filter using the data in the account reps table range a10 through i29 so we're literally going to just type a10 through i29 here is our list range our criteria range is going to be a5 through i6 like so And we're going to copy to another location, and then we're going to specify the copy range, which is A34 through I34. And then click OK. Now, if this were done correctly, we should see uh, these four records appear down here in our extract range table. OK, so that step is finished. That's all we had to do here. Um, 
so step number 11 says as a contrast Bao also wants to list the clients in other parts of the country in the account reps table display the filter arrows and then filter the table to display all clients except those there in the uh, southeast so what i need to do here is turn on my filter and i can do that by coming to home and we're going to come to sort and filter and i'm just going to turn on my filter now turning on this filter is going to allow me to eliminate certain things from here so here what we want to do is eliminate everyone from the southeast i don't want to see anyone from the southeast here so I'm going to click OK, and then you'll see that as I do that, those numbers uh, or those figures are gone. Okay, so step number 12 says go to the devices worksheet, which includes a table name, devices, and list uh, details about the medical monitoring equipment, Murray Medical Sales. Clear the filter from the table to display the data. So here we have a filter set, and you can see that this icon looks a little different. This is the culprit here, so I'm going to say select all. And by the way, if you missed that, I, I just clicked that little button right there, select all, and click OK, and that allows me to see everything. Okay, so that was all we had to do for step 12. Step 13 says the devices table currently... Um, is sorted by release date, but Bao prefers to list it by device names in alphabetical order. Sort the device table in ascending order by device name. So if I come over here by device name, you'll see I have a sort option that's here. So we just wanna make sure that we set the proper um, ascending. So ascending is sort A to Z, and there we go. You see it kind of sorts that table for us. And then the next thing, uh, we want to do is sort the devices table by ascending order and device name. Yeah, we did that already. Okay, so 14 says Bao wants to format the devices table to match the account reps table and display the full text of the table headers. So apply the dark green style medium three to devices table. So what we're going to do is select our table here and we're going to come over here to styles and we're going to apply that same style, which is the dark green uh style right there so there we go i have that so that was actually I, I went to format as a table and then i just picked that very same thing um so that way we can uh, set to that same color and then it says in cell d4 wrap the uh, text to display the complete data so here is d4 and as you can see the text is kind of not in the cell i'm just going to come over here to this wrap text button and click that and it's going to fix that finally we want to add a row to this table. It says the devices table is missing one device that Murray Medical sales. Add a record to the end of the table containing the data in the instructions shown below. So what I want to do here is um, I need to add a table here. So what I want to do is go to table design. And if I can't find it in table design, I can right click this. Uh, sometimes if that doesn't work, we can just select one row. And when you do that, it's not no longer affecting the entire table, but I can come over here and right click this. I should be able to now and insert table rows below. So I'm looking, make sure it's not inserting a row below because we're doing a table row. Now we got a little bit of a divide by error. Um, but let's go ahead or divide by zero error, but don't worry, but we're gonna fill this in with uh, the correct things from the instructions here. So Okay, very good. So once we have that filled in, you'll notice our error just went away. So we are good to go there. All right, so let's take a look. I think that was the last step. Let's make sure our workbook looks exactly like the one on display down here. And it does. So this looks exactly like what your, uh, your instructions say it should look like. 
So go ahead, uh, submit your assignment, and have a wonderful day.